issue with existing batteries is that they suck. This is the classic batteries not included. So do we really need swappable batteries to save the world or do we just need better batteries? Battery swapping is the buzzword when it comes to EVs. But what is the deal with battery swapping and is it a good or a bad idea? Welcome to WhatsApp where we talk about everything electric. We swap out batteries in rather a lot of everyday items, from watches to torches to cameras. So why not swap out the batteries in the machines that keep us mobile? That's what a lot of manufacturers seem to be thinking. NIO in China and Norway, Ample in California, ACM in Germany, Sun Mobility in India and Gogoro in Thailand to name just a few. And some countries also see battery swapping as the quickest way to get people to switch to EVs without range anxiety. Case in point, India. In February 2022, when India's budget for the year was announced, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said that battery swapping was clearly the way forward and the Indian government was hoping to standardize batteries, which would mean a one-size-fits-all battery that could work for a variety of different scooters or cars. In India, Bounce Infinity offers the E1 scooter with the option of swappable batteries, Hero Motocorp has tied up with Gogoro's battery swapping network, and Hero Electric has tied up with Sun Mobility. So it seems Team Battery Swap is go. But even though everyone seems really gung-ho about battery swapping technology, we're still wondering, is battery swapping a good or a bad idea? To fully understand this, let's jump back in time to the first manufacturer who thought up battery swapping. Your electric car's battery is switched in an efficient, fully automated manner. Back in 2007, an Israeli company named Better Place certainly thought battery swapping was a good idea. Founder Shai Agassi had a lofty goal, to reduce the world's dependence on fossil fuels. And he convinced a lot of people that this was the right way to go. Better Place raised plenty of funding and Renault-Nissan agreed to build cars to their specifications so that batteries could be swapped out. In effect, they'd separated the battery from the electric car buying experience. In Agassiz's own words... In a sense, if you want to think about it, this is the classic batteries not included. So Better Place managed to reduce the cost of the car for the customer and eliminated long charging times because their automated battery swapping system took all of five minutes to perform the transplant. So in effect, Better Place were the originators of automotive battery swapping. But unfortunately by 2013, their batteries were dead. See, despite a network of swapping stations across Israel, Better Place didn't sell too many cars before it went bust. And there are multiple reasons cited for this failure, including the fact that circa 2008, the world and most car makers weren't really ready for electric cars, let alone innovative charging or swapping solutions. So, is battery swapping a good or a bad idea? Well, back in 2013, this guy seemed to think it was good. Around the time Better Place was filing for bankruptcy, he unveiled his vision for battery swapping in the Tesla Model S. But by 2016, Tesla had abandoned battery swapping in favor of their supercharger network. But not before their techno king said some more interesting things about batteries. Now, the issue with existing batteries is that they suck, okay? <laughs> they're really horrible. They're expensive. They they're, they're, they're unreliable, they're, they're sort of stinky, ugly, bad in every way. Well, jump ahead to 2022 and it's still hard to dispute some of the things that Musk said about batteries. It's generally agreed that car batteries are expensive and heavy and take a long time to charge. Plus, you have to be careful how you charge them because you might damage the battery chemistry, which could lead to your battery going to a better place sooner rather than later. What has changed between 2013 and now? A lot, including Dieselgate, which was a catalyst for our electric future. 
Between 2013 and 2021, global EV sales have grown 33 times. And with more EVs on road, now is the time for more charging infrastructure and innovative battery solutions. With battery swapping, range anxiety is a non-issue, so more people are likely to buy EVs with swappable batteries. And if you're selling EVs without a battery, you're reducing the initial amount of money a customer needs to spend. Plus, batteries don't last forever. Their efficiency tapers off and eventually they die. And replacing the battery in an EV costs a lot of money. In fact, it upset one Tesla Model S owner so much that instead of paying 22,000 euros on a new battery, he blew his car up with 30 kilos of dynamite instead. Swappable batteries do offer benefits, but they're not flawless. EV owners have no control over the condition of the battery they get at a swap station. They just need to live with it until their next swap. And until batteries get standardized, you're stuck with the battery that's specific to your EV manufacturer, which limits your choice. And as is the case with swappable batteries, especially with cars, there's no option to try charging them at home. Then there's the fact that swappable batteries mean a lot more batteries. You need more batteries than just the number of vehicles on the road. And this costs more money, money which is eventually recovered from the customer via subscription plans. So eventually, with time, you end up paying what it would have cost to buy the machine with the battery in the first place. And though some manufacturers say swappable batteries need less lithium, you still need more batteries. So more manufacturing, more minerals, more mining and more shipping. Not exactly green. And in the case of swapping stations specifically for cars, the robotics to automate a charging station add another element of cost to the process. All things considered, battery swapping seems like a quick fix solution to our charging dilemmas. On the one hand, it's low-hanging fruit for two- and three-wheelers. And when it comes to four-wheelers that need to ply constantly, like taxis or fleet vehicles, swappable batteries do make sense. But queuing up to swap the battery in a private car seems a bit much, especially since if all goes well, even if batteries don't get a whole lot better fast, charging infrastructure soon will. So do we really need swappable batteries to save the world or do we just need better batteries? Ones that are lighter, more efficient, charge faster and last longer. And if batteries won't ever become more efficient, is manufacturing more and more of them going to saddle us with a problem that we someday can't swap out? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, subscribe to DWREV for more content like this.